Hey guys, what is up everyone? Today I want to give you a video on how to install the newest version of PFSense 2.4.4 which as of making this video is still in beta status but I want to make the video anyway because usually uh, nothing much is going to change uh, once it's in that final or pretty final state. So if you want to install the live version you just go to the downloads page and probably when you look up this video there will be 2.4.4 available already you can just go ahead select your architecture and download it um, if you want to install it with a usb stick you have to select the usb mem stick installer and of course if you want a cd image you need uh, the cd image iso installer for now if you want to follow along you can also go ahead and download 2.4.4 before it's officially released by clicking on daily snapshots selecting installer images and then choose the latest pfsense ce memstick 2.4.4 development amd64 version uh, just choose the make sure you choose the one with the larger uh, file size here so always download the latest once you have downloaded that, go to your downloads folder, extract this file here and then you need to, if you also want to install it in VirtualBox like I'm going to do it, uh, you need to rename this from uh, IMG to ISO, otherwise uh, VirtualBox cannot do anything with that. Alright, then open VirtualBox, click on new, give your virtual machine a name and select I think BSD, FreeBSD, 64-bit and click on next. Allocated some memory, I'll, yeah wh whatever one gig is fine for our purpose now. Uh, create a new virtual hard disk now, leave it on VDI, leave it on dynamically allocated and give it some hard disk space, 10 gigabytes are plenty for PFSense and also select a location where you want to store the image. I'm gonna put it somewhere here. Alright, that's fine. Then click on create. Alright, the virtual machine is created now. If you want to install it on a physical computer or appliance, I'll link a uh, article that I've written in the description below where you can see how to install PFSense on a physical device um, but next to creating a bootable USB drive and putting the PFSense image on it there is not much difference from the moment when we boot this machine up right here so the installer will be exactly the same all right so the first thing we want to do because we have a firewall so we want to have a couple of interfaces to play with right click the machine click on settings and select network and select enable network adapter so let's assume you want to connect or let's assume you don't want to connect your firewall to the internet so to your physical router you want to have it in a separate network then you would go ahead and select here internal network so pfsense doesn't mess around with your actual router because pfsense will also um, set up a DHCP server and there you might run into problems if you don't know what you're doing so put it on internal network if you want to have the internet connection or share the internet connection from your router you're going to select um, bridged adapter here which basically means that the virtual pfsense is pulling the internet connection off from your router uh, from your router and um, simulating it uh, in the in the virtual appliance so this uh, I leave it on bridge because I want to have internet access available then I go to adapter 2 enable the network adapter as well and set it on uh, internal network and I do the same thing with the third adapter just in case I will need it and also put it on internal network all right let's go through once more so I'll set it this will basically be my WAN interface. So this will be the interface that will be connected to your modem in a real appliance, all right? Uh, the second one, that will be our LAN interface one, and this will be our LAN interface two, or opt, optional interface. So that we have a little bit of uh, stuff to play with. Uh, just check in system again. 
Yeah, this looks fine. One processor is okay. Alright, let's click on OK and click on Start to start up the machine. Once you start it up for the first time, you will get asked to select the image we downloaded and uh, you go ahead and select the ISO file that we just renamed and click on Start. And if we did everything right so far, the installer should now come up. I've went through this process before and there are slight changes to the previous version of PFSense. They seem to always make the installer better. You can just wait here for the auto boot to come up. Just wait and wait and wait. So PFSense really gets, uh, they, they put a lot of thought in this installer and they're trying to make it as easy as possible. I still remember when I installed it for the first time uh, back a few years ago, it was not as easy as it is now. Um, I actually had to look up a couple of things and now if you have a setup like in uh, this virtual machine that we have a WAN interface and two LAN interfaces, PFSense will automatically recognize which is the WAN interface, so it checks on uh, which interface uh, might be your internet connection available and sets this automatically as your WAN interface. So this is pretty convenient. I'm gonna make this bigger here. And we just give it a couple of seconds to finish booting. Okay, here we are. So first you are going to have to accept their copyright and distribution notice. Read it carefully, of course. And uh, then you can select if you want to use a rescue shell, but because this is a installation video, we are going to choose install PFSense. All right, the next thing we do, we choose a key map. So for my purpose, I choose the German one and I think I need to press enter. Let's see if it's got selected. Yeah, you need to press enter and then you need to go back up all the way and select continue with DE or whatever keyboard you choose. Hit enter again. Uh, for the partitioning, we want to choose automatically the UFS system. It's the classical one. Uh, the ZFS file system on PFSense is pretty new. I think it came with version 2.3, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'll do a separate video on that because it gets slightly more complicated with this file system, but uh, we are going to use the classical one. And now you will see the magic of PFSense, which is installing very quickly. I remember I was waiting much longer for that in the past. Pause the video for a second, but it should be done really quickly. Okay, that took less than 30 more seconds to finish and we get asked if you want to do some manual modifications, which we don't. So select no and hit enter. And again, you can pull up a shell if you need to but we are just going to reboot the system. Let's see if there is another prompt. You might, if you use VirtualBox, get prompted to remove your disk image, but in this case we don't. And usually VirtualBox... By the way, if your cursor is, uh, is caught in this window, just press the right control button and you are out again. Uh, it usually... No, it did not in this case. Okay, so uh, the image is still in there. So go on devices, go on optical drives and select remove disk from virtual drive and simply select machine, reset and reset. In some cases, it automatically drops the uh, image file. In this case, it didn't. Okay, let's wait a couple of seconds for PFSense to boot up in our live system. All right, and here we go. We can see that PFSense automatically recognized the WAN interface that I have set up to bridge network and automatically assigned it a DHCP address from my router. And also it recognized the LAN interface, which it set to the default IP of 192.168.1.1, which is the IP of your router. Per default, DHCP is activated on PFSense, which means every device you connect to this uh, LAN port on your PFSense, be it physical or virtual, will be assigned a DHCP address from your server. So what we can do from now is basically go over to the web interface. 
I pulled up a Linux Mint VM here, which is basically plugged into the LAN interface of our PFSense firewall and we should be able to access the web configuration from this virtual machine. The machine booted up, we can first check if we got the correct IP address by opening a terminal and you can either type hostname tag i which shows the IP or simply ifconfig like you are probably used to but I prefer hostname dash i because or tag i because it just shows me the IP which is the information that I need. Alright so it seems like we got a IP address assigned from the DHCP server which then means we should be able to get to it over the web interface. So let's open up a browser and type the default IP of PFSense in there. You will get a warning that the connection is not secured. Simply click on advance and add an exception for that. It's perfectly safe. I'll have an article on COSEC how you're gonna secure this connection specifically with PFSense. So you can read up on that. I'll leave a link in the description as well. All right, so the default login is admin and pfsense, everything small. I'm gonna save that. And once you started that up, um, we are going to run through the initial configuration wizard, which actually is pretty good for newbies. I, of course, don't use it anymore because I'm very uh, aware of all the settings that I need to set on a new firewall, but uh, we are just going through it together because it covers all the basics. So click next, decide if you want to support PFSense with buying their global support, which is actually pretty great. I'll have a couple of contacts to the guys from NetGate and they are really, really capable and it's a really good support. So if you want to go ahead and buy a support subscription, it would be great to support PFSense in that way. Click on next. By the way, this video is in no way sponsored by PFSense, unfortunately. Um, hostname. Alright, so put whatever hostname you want. I'll put PFSense tag 1 because it will not be my last PFSense that I'm going to use in my lab. Domain stays local domain. In your case, it can be whatever domain it is you, you want. And we leave everything else on default. We don't need to worry about that now. We're gonna leave the NTP server, which is the time server, on default as well. And we are going to choose a time zone. Choose whatever suits you. Where the hell is Europe? Yeah, there it is, Berlin. All right, next. Then we want to configure our WAN interface. In my case, it's DHCP because I'm pulling the internet connection from an existing router, from an existing internet connection. In your case, it will probably be PPPoE, which when you select it, should bring up, it's not gonna get stuck, come on. My VM is a little slow, yeah. Which brings up this uh, field, which is the PPPoE configuration. Here you would put the uh, username and the password from your internet provider and give it a service name, etc, etc. So pretty classical uh, internet connection, but as I said, uh, because I have DHCP in here, I'll put it back on DHCP and leave everything empty. This you leave tagged, it's simply uh, some default blockings of private networks and of some other default stuff. Um, click next. I don't have everything on top of my head, but it's pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty good default configuration of PFSense if you leave everything on default. So the LAN IP address you could change if you wanted to. In my case, I'll just leave it as it is. Click on next. And then we are also going to change the admin password. You should make it a bit longer than four letters. Uh, you can choose to save it or not. And then you are going to reload uh, the configuration. It takes a couple of seconds. And you can check for updates. I think this is also new on the end of the wizard. 
let's just do it live here let's see what's going to happen then we also see if we have a, a working internet connection at the same time but it looks good or maybe not it's not doing anything here but uh, Keep in mind, this is a pre-release. It's not the final version of PFSense 2.4.4. So let's try it again. Um, this, oh yeah, okay, now it works. All right, then you can choose the branch and as we can see, it's up to date. It just took a couple of seconds. So we are on 2.4.4, which also means our internet connection should be working. Let's check in our dashboard, accept the no di commercial distribution of PFSense and close this services and support window read it through if you want to as i said good support from their side and we can see that we have a uh, internet connection available and that we have both interfaces up and we can do a final test and go ahead and where we go ping yeah we go to diagnostics and ping and let's ping www.google.com it should give us some positive result and it does all right so i think the wizard is really good now and uh, this basically concludes a basic PFSense installation. So you can see we fairly quickly run uh, through the whole process and it's super easy, it got super easy. And if you want to read uh, more of PFSense, I'll link the PFSense category in the description of the video below. I have a lot of PFSense tutorial tutorials uh, on COSEC.com and I will also do a couple more videos in the near future. If you would like a separate video on how to install PFSense on a physical appliance like an old laptop or an old computer, please leave a comment below and let me know and I will certainly produce the tutorial for you. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the little bell button that you get notified uh, of new videos and when they will be released. Thanks guys, see you in the next one.